is broken. And it's broken because of sin. Sin is a devastating, not just a devastating word, but it's a devastating effect. Now, we live in a world today, or I do, I'm sure you, you live in the same world I do. This way is yes. Now, <clears throat> one of the things you got to know about me is I like interaction. I like if you agree with something, you kind of do this. If you don't agree with it, go like this. And if you don't really care, just do your shoulders. Uh, just kind of let me know that you're not straight. We'll make sure you're awake. But one of the one of the, the things that happens in our society today is that because of what's being taught across the world is that the theory that we were not created, that we evolved, that we uh, were not literally in six days did God create the world, but God, and sometimes we even have Christians that say, well, yes, I believe in a literal God, but God could have chose to do it in millions of years. He could have if He wanted to, but He didn't. He did it in six literal days. And this morning is so crucial for you to really know the Gospel, to really understand the Gospel and understand that you had a broken relationship. If you have never repented, if you have never repented before a holy God that you were a sinner in a broken relationship and going to accept the payment of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross, I question your salvation. I believe one of the things that's happening in the church today is we have a thing called easy believism. Well, all I have to do is just pray to receive Christ and thank Him for entering my life and my life's going to be so much better and my life, I'm going to have all my problems solved and all this and I'm never going to have another problem again. And it's called easy believism and that's not salvation. So I don't believe that according to the Word of God that salvation can come until we recognize that we were sinners and that God sent His Son Christ to pay our sin debt on the cross. So to see that, the Apostle Paul, God raised him up to write the book of Romans. Now Romans is a very, very interesting book. Uh, Peter in his writings uh, alluded to probably what Paul wrote in Romans. He said that some of the writings of Paul are hard to understand. And you know, Paul is the one that gets into a lot of the election and predestination and, and all of this. Paul's the one that deals with that in the book of Romans. But Paul also deals in the book of Romans with this thing called sin. And the reason man stands guilty before God is one reason and one reason only that man is born in sin. Sin is not something you learn to do. Sin is not something that you uh, are going to pick up when you're 12 or 13 years old. You are born in sin. Man is a sinner. Now, what I want to do this morning is I want to look in Romans chapter 5. I want to look at verses 12 through 19. And what I'm going to try to do this morning is I'm going to contrast first Adam, Adam of Genesis chapter 3, with the new Adam, which is Christ. Now, to understand the two, you need to go back and read or look at Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3 to me is the worst chapter in all the Word of God. Genesis chapter 3. Up until Genesis chapter 3, everything was perfect. Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2, the world was perfect. Then something happened in chapter 3 that was so serious, so devastating, that when you get to chapter 6 of Genesis, God is going to destroy the world. In just three chapters, from Genesis chapter 3 to the end of chapter 3, to when you get over to Genesis chapter 6, where we have the flood, God says in Genesis chapter 5, I'm sorry, yeah, Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, that every thought of man 
was continually evil. He's got, this is what God says, every thought that man has, every thought was, was an evil thought. And so God raised Noah up. We know the, about the flood uh, in Genesis. But before the flood, something took place in Genesis chapter 3. Because of time, let me just kind of summarize this up. But if you want to check it out, you can read all of Genesis 3. What happened was, Adam and Eve were in the garden. We know that Satan came to them, the serpent came to them, tempted Eve, said, Eve, you know, you not to eat of this. And uh, the account was that she ate it, gave Adam, he ate it. And God came looking for them and they ran from God. They didn't want to see God. They ran from God. And God called out and said, Adam, where are you? And he, of course, Adam and Eve were hiding. And when they came out, they had put clothes on or had tried to cover up their nakedness. They were ashamed. It's one of the things about sin. Sin always, always, when it comes to fruition in someone's life, it always brings shame. Always brings guilt. So, here they are. They're standing before God. God knows that they had sinned. They had eaten. They had done the one thing God had told them not to do. They had gone against God. And their relationship with God was broken. Up until that point, they had perfect fellowship. Perfect relationship with God. But because they sinned, that relationship was broke. They stood before God ashamed. They stood before God embarrassed. They knew that they had done wrong. You see, when sin really takes a hold, when man really understands sin, he really understands that he is separated from God. So what happened was, God said, okay, and so we know that from Genesis 3 that God put a curse on the serpent, upon man, upon woman, and upon creation. Paul picks that up in Romans chapter 1. He said all of creation is groaning because of this concept, because of this one act of sin. Now, you get over in Romans, and Paul makes a statement in the book of Romans that is a devastating statement when he says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All. How much does all encounter? How much does all encompass? All. Everything. He says all the sin, talking about mankind. All have sin. And you see, this goes against culture. This goes right against culture. I'm a Caucasian. I'm an American. I'm a, I was, I'm a sinner before God. You're Korean. You may be other, other nationalities. It does not matter if you are breathing air, how many of y'all are breathing air? Okay, if you're breathing air, you're a sinner before a holy God. Because of what Adam did. Is that fair? I don't want to say anything about fair. But what I'm going to show you, according to the Word of God, according to what God says, God says every man, and I'm including women in that, I'm including children in that. Every human being stands guilty before God. Now, Romans chapter 5. I want to look at it. Now, what I'm going to do this morning is because of what Adam did, because of the sin of Adam, sin is in what I call imputed to man. It's one of the reasons why the virgin birth. Man, it's, it's imputed through the blood. We are sinners by nature because of what Adam did. Now you've got to understand that. You've got to understand that if you believe that Adam was not a literal person, then how do you going to believe that Jesus was a literal person? I met someone that says, well, I kind of believe in, in Adam that he was kind of a figure and he lived millions of years ago. Well, how do you get that? If you don't have a literal first Adam, how are you going to have a literal second Adam? If you have a literal Adam that sin was ushered into the world, you've got to have a literal second Adam that has the payment, has the patch for the penalty of sin. So let's look at what the Word of God says. Now, I'm going to read 
verses 12 through 19, and then I'm going to come back and make comments on these verses. Now, we're going to contrast the first Adam with the second Adam. What the first Adam did, what the second Adam did. We know the second Adam to be Christ. Look with me beginning in verse 12 of Romans. Romans 5, verse 12. Wherefore is by one man sin, singular, entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. What does that verse say? Everybody sinned. The Bible says everybody sinned. It says all. All men. It said one man sinned, it passed on all men. Now verse 13 says, For unto the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Now why do you think he used Moses? What's Moses known for in the Word of God? Moses is known for to introduce the law. The law in, in, the, in the Hebrew mind, the law in Paul's mind, was the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. The Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, is called the law. So it said, Never let death reign from Adam to Moses before the law was written down. Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. In other words, they didn't have to go out and eat an apple or eat the fruit to sin. But they were sinners because of what Adam did. Now, Verse, this next phrase in verse 14 is so crucial. He says, Who is the figure of Him that was to come? Now, He just introduced to us the second Adam right here. He said Adam was a figure, was a representative of the human race. We know that. It says now, He says, is the figure to come. Verse 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. Now, I'm going to go through here. And as I go through here reading this passage, I want you to either mark in your Bible or mark it in your mind or mark it down on paper. I want you to count with me the number of times he refers to this gift. Okay? In these passages of Scripture. First gift, verse 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace which is by one man, Jesus Christ hath abound to many. Verse 16. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift for the judgment was by one the condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses under justification. Another word for salvation. Verse 17. For by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, verse 18, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men under justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, and so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. If you go over to 1 Corinthians in the 15th chapter, verse 22, it says, For as, as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Now what Paul's doing here, Paul is contrasting. You know what the contrast is? Hold one, don't know what the contrast is. Okay, I'm going to show you the difference between two. Contrast is to show the difference between two people. I'm going to contrast, if I was going to contrast myself and coach. Now, one of the things that coach, this Mr. S, you're on the front row, raise your hand. We call him coach. One of, the, one of the things that's similar between coach and I is that we don't have much hair up top. <laughs> now that's a contrast. Now another contrast is, is we're both good looking. That's another contrast. See what I'm saying? I'm making, we both breathe air. 
we both have two hands. Hold up your hands so they don't understand you got two hands. <laughs> we have two feet. Don't hold those up, though. He's got his shoes off. I don't want them to. So the contrast, I'm making a contrast. But now, here's the difference. There's more of me than there is of Him. You see that? That there's more of me than there is of Him. Alright? Now, that's we're, we're, we're the same, but we're different. My mustache is longer than His mustache. Okay? So there's some likes, contrast. There's going to be some things that are alike, but yet contrast, there's going to be some things that are different. And it's so crucial, so important to understand what the similarities in the contrast. What's together and what's different. Because that, that salvation is based upon what Paul says in this few verses right here. The first Adam was a man. He was created by God. He was a man. He breathed air. He lived upon the earth. The second Adam is Christ. Christ was not created. That's the contrast. He wasn't created. But He was born. He came he, in the figure of a man. He had two hands. He had two feet. I don't know if He had hair or not. I'm sure Christ probably had hair. I'm sure Adam had hair. Because if, if bald it was as beautiful as God says it was, everybody would be bald. But uh, most folks are born with hair. So, the first Adam disobeys, very important, first Adam disobeyed God. Perfect. He was a perfect man. Only perfect man that's ever lived outside of Jesus Christ. A perfect man had a choice. He chose to disobey God. Send him into the world. Christ comes on the scene. He's born. He grows up. He has a choice to disobey God. He chooses not to. He lives his life in total obedience. The first Adam sinned, and so death passed on all men. Look with me in verse 5. Here's the things. I'm going to look at the first Adam first. And I'm going to come back and look at what Christ has done. Verse 12. The Bible says by one man, talking about Adam here, what happened? Sin entered into the world. So Adam introduced sin into the world. Alright, what happened because sin was introduced into the world? Verse 12 says, Death passed on all men. There was no death up until this point. There was no death in this world until Adam sinned, until Adam chose to disobey God, that broken relationship, he began to live a life based outside of God, making his own choices outside of God. His relationship was broken. His death passed on all men. Now, the Bible says that uh, Adam lived 930 years. That's an incredible length of time as far as I'm concerned. I'm 59 years old and I feel like I'm half dead sometimes. <laughs> but 930 years, but Adam died. When Adam sinned, death passed upon all men. Now, look with me in verse 16. We're talking about, we're talking about Adam. I'm sorry, look at verse 15. But not as the offense. So now this sin is called an offense. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. For through the offense of one, many be dead. Death and sin entered, entered through Adam, the first Adam. Adam introduced the world to sin and to death. Look at verse 16. It says, And not so is by one man sin. But listen to what this. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. Okay, Adam introduced sin. Death passed upon all men. Now we're talking about being condemned before God. We're talking about in verse 16. He was judgment, condemnation. A lost person stands before God in judgment and condemnation. 
Paul says in the first part of Romans, it says, therefore there is now no condemnation, I believe it was in Romans 8 and 1. Therefore there is no condemnation who are in to them who are in Christ Jesus. So the first Adam, man, this guy's popular, isn't he? He introduced death. He introduced sin. He introduced the offense. He introduced judgment. He introduced condemnation. This is what the first Adam has done. Look at verse 18. It says, Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment became upon all men to condemnation. Now the Bible teaches that if you only are born once, you will die twice. You will die a physical death and you will die a spiritual death. Eternal separation from God. Judgment, condemnation of God is that man can die and be totally separated forever and ever and ever and ever away from God. That's the judgment and condemnation that God is allowed to come pass on men. Pretty serious stuff, isn't it? Why? Wow. Goes down and look at verse 19. It says, For as by one man's disobedience, many were made...